I recently took some massive risks to transform my life. I quit my job, I cut off my left arm, I moved around to the other side of the world to live in the jungle. You might wonder, why did I take all these risks? Was it all worth it? Well, keep listening and I'll share with you the whole story and tell you what I learned and how it might help you in your own life. When I was a teenager, I crashed my motorbike into this fence and paralyzed most of my body. After 30 years, I finally felt the technology had advanced enough to the point where I could replace my left arm with a bionic limb and get some additional functionality and abilities. But rather than limit myself to one massive life change, I decided to layer on two or three more things. And of course, all of this during a pandemic. Go big or go home, right? I had just decided to walk away from my good paying, stable job in Abu Dhabi and go back home to visit some family and friends in Canada. I found myself with some time and resources and wondering what my next adventure should be. I decided to follow my dreams and become part cyborg. In November, I flew to Toronto to have elective limb amputation and came back with one less arm. Amputation is complete and I no longer have a left arm. The surgery and aftermath was mentally very tough. Kind of wiped out mentally and physically. I'm not, not gonna lie, it was probably a little bit more mental than physical. On track now. On to the next step. Then on New Year's Eve, 2020, I left Canada in a frantic search for a new home. After an aborted flight to the UAE, I landed in Panama. And after one week, I fell in love with the mountain jungles and bought a home. Hello from Boquete, Panama. We are here by the river having a refreshment after a bunch of real estate listing searches today. I then flew to the UAE to tidy up some loose ends. After one month, I flew back to Panama and set about making a home. I took a significant amount of flack from family and friends. How could you travel during a pandemic? This is how I felt about it at the time. Yeah, I think this quote, make our let our choices reflect our hopes and not our fears. I think it's a good one. I think you know, I certainly intend to live my life this year uh, with that guiding me, that thinking guiding me. I'm certainly not gonna constrain my life by my own fears or certainly not the fears of others. People might call me selfish for that, but uh, that's what I'm gonna do. In the summer of 2021, I flew back to Calgary, Alberta to get fitted for my new prosthetic arm. The prosthetics people said that my body needed about half a year to settle after an amputation surgery before I could be ready for a fitting. Then in December, I flew back to Panama to spend Christmas there while I waited for my new arm to be built. During all of this, a friend of mine convinced me to join him and a group of friends to form a non-profit organization. I am pleased to open the doors to the Sarouk Center for Leadership Development. Our goal here is to help young people become great leaders. So I flew back to Calgary to have meetings for that. And then I picked up my new arm and flew back to Panama. In March, I began practicing and learning how to use the arm. The robotic arm almost immediately broke. My sister happened to be visiting me in Panama at the time, so she flew the arm back to Calgary to be fixed. In September 2022, we flew back to Calgary to pick up the fixed arm and attend some more meetings for the nonprofit organization that I founded. And we flew back to Panama. After just a few weeks of having a new arm, it broke again. I was leaving on a long trip around the world, so I didn't have time to figure that out. So we just threw the arm in the suitcase and took it it with us while we traveled. The trip involved going to Africa. We flew to Kigali via Panama City and Istanbul. The airline broke my wheelchair in Panama City. The wheelchair has been fixed, welded after the fourth welding shop. And it looks, it looks all right. I mean, it's, I have no other choice than to use it. So now we're just uh, waiting to board our flight to Istanbul and then it lost the wheelchair entirely in Istanbul. These airlines can believe it. I spent some very nervous hours waiting in a hotel room without any wheelchair in Kigali, hoping my wheelchair showed up. Thankfully, it finally showed up and it was fixable, so I continued on with my journey throughout Rwanda and the rest of the trip. I volunteer for A Better World Canada, and this leg of the trip allowed me to review some project work that was going on in Rwanda. Hello there, uh, checking in again from Lake Kibu. I am north 
Western Rwanda, just across the border from the Congo, looking at some of the programs that we've been funding to see how they're going, if it's viable and worthwhile to continue, maybe it's done. I'll explain more about that later in a future video. We then went on to Tanzania, uh, Kenya, for some safari. And then went to Dubai to visit some friends. And then flew to Manila, Philippines. And then Palawan, Philippines. To spend November and December with my caregiver's family. Kobe, the makers of this hand that broke, flew me a brand new hand by a FedEx. And I was shocked to actually receive it in a remote town in the Philippines. Now to layer on even more complexity and life change into this story. While I was in the Philippines, I was forced to actually decide whether or not I was prepared to let somebody that I had actually fallen in love with go just because I had so much animosity and baggage built up around relationships and never wanting to be in another relationship because of what happened in my past. I agonized over the question of actually, you know, am I prepared to let somebody go who I actually had fallen in love with or do I recognize the relationship and and just let life happen. After some brutal, brutal soul searching, I finally decided that I, I wasn't prepared to let the person that I had fallen in love with walk away. I decided to finally recognize a relationship with my former caregiver, now girlfriend. Life happens, right? And then in January, we flew back to Calgary to attend some more meetings for the nonprofit, and then flew back to Panama. I then set about practicing and learning how to use my new art and building up the machine learning database. The arm has a number of useful functions and hand grips, all controlled by my mind and through various sensors in my shoulder socket. And then in February 2023, the hand broke again. My parents happened to be visiting Panama at the time, so my father took it apart to try and see if he could fix it. I was shocked to see him take it apart, fix it, and actually put it back together so it was working. In September 2023, I picked up my newly repaired arm again and set about relearning everything rebuilding the machine learning database and that basically brings me to today so i experienced the last three years of massive risk profound changes extreme frustration with the arm always breaking a lot of disappointment i learned some things that hopefully can also be applied in your life number one don't be afraid to cut dead weight loose this can apply to so many things in one's life, but it applied in my situation to my useless left arm, which I carried around for 30 years for no reason. I should have gotten rid of it years earlier. Number two, big changes never turn out exactly as you expect. This should be obvious, but it's worth repeating. The idealistic dream is always different than reality. Number three, consistency is way more important than cool. In physical equipment manufacturing, there's a trade-off between sophistication and robustness. Getting the balance right is the key to a successful product. Number four, meaning is way more important than money. As I've gotten older and I know people who've been successful, um, in some cases very successful, and I've noticed that um, when they succeed, when they get everything they want, they destroy themselves. I've noticed this again and again and again. It's, you are the dog who caught the car. I had a really hard lesson in learning this. When I had achieved all that I wanted in life, like a dog that finally catches the car it was chasing, I didn't know what to do with it once I caught it. I consider with maximum certainty that the amputation of my left arm was very, very, very worth it and should have been done decades ago. Not having to carry around that dead weight and worry about it getting hurt, getting too hot, getting too cold, skin breakdown. It's so nice not to have to worry about that now. However, the jury is still out on the utility of my new bionic arm. As you've just seen, the kit is really flaky. I will update you in future videos if and when I can determine if this bionic arm was useful enough to be worth it. This is a very much open question right now. Until recently, uh, the answer would have been an emphatic yes. I love it there. I love living in the mountains there, the temperate climate, all the green and lush growing things, so nice. But recently there have been massive protests and civil unrest. The population is very unhappy with the current government and its actions, so big changes might be coming. There's been an inability to get fuel 
for the vehicles, propane, the blockades on the Pan American Highway have been a major problem and have increased the risk profile for the country for foreign investments and tourism. It's hopefully resolving and the direction looks positive right now. Quitting that job was worth it. I wasn't growing anymore or learning and I was becoming very frustrated with company politics. Change was necessary, but there are many aspects of my former work that I miss. I miss the team camaraderie, working together towards a common goal, the pressure of deadlines, a reason to get up in the morning. If you're wondering how a paralyzed Canadian farm boy named Scott Sankey ended up working at the BP level in the heart of the energy industry in Abu Dhabi, click this link to learn the inspiring story of how it all happened and the key factors that I credit for enabling that success.